Alright. This is a silly idea, but we're doing this. This is a very silly idea. Really don't have to do this? I mean, I made the poll, and the poll said yes. I will abide by the democratic rule. Besides, it, it's going to be a short stream. It, it'll be like 20 minutes tops. Can ignore chat. I, I can ignore chat. You don't run a democracy, you run a dictatorship. I mean, here is a dictatorship, but over on Kitten's channel, it's a, it's a democracy. So, hello, how's it going? You're up late. What are we reading? We're reading bedtime stories. Are you ranking? That, but I have to maintain the facade of democracy, Mick. Like the facade is what's important. We are currently waiting, Sir Heno, because, well, so I have this from my childhood, which is like a set of picture books, and I figure we'll just start from book one, which features the stories The Golden Goose, The Pied Piper of Hamelin, and The Snow Queen. And we'll just see how it goes. But we are currently waiting for Kitten to raid through as this was happening based on a poll that happened on her channel. Don't you mean Frozen? Um, yes, sort of. Nice beard, by the way. Thanks, it, it's kind of growing on me. Although, I, I don't know when this raid is going to happen since it, it's Kitten and she gets distracted. Which isn't a problem. Oh, hi, Otaku. What are you thanking me for? Peaceful? What's peaceful? I just got to figure out what would be the best angle for, like, showing the images at the same time. I think that'll work. This place is peaceful, I love it. I, I, I don't think it'll be peaceful for much longer. Or it might stay peaceful the whole time. That is also very possible.
fact, I think Mick has just made sure the chaos is coming. Wait, where is the redeem to get you to do shots? That was not going to be a permanent redeem, sir, I know. I might... No, I'm not putting the redeem back on. You do what you can. That's all that's ever asked of you, Mick. And then you go above and beyond. In fairness, I was worried you were going to die last time. Last time was pretty fucking savage. <laughs> um, yeah. It was... That was a choice. <laughs> was it a smart choice? Who knows? But it is a choice. I made it. I survived. It was not a smart choice. I mean, I. it was one of my choices, so of course it wasn't a smart choice. I don't make smart choices. I make the worst choices. Alright. Looks like the raid is starting on Kitten's End, so... About to be inundated with people. And then we will begin. I need to get some actual decorations for this. Bookshelf at the back. Especially if I'm going to use it for chatting. It looks like a lot more of a clusterfuck when it's uh, on the larger camera. Watch out, they're arriving. I, I'm aware, Otaku. I'm aware. Which should get exciting. Alright. Uh, thank you for following Kahikaru619. How's it going? Can you put a nice firecrack music in the background? Oh, I could probably do that. Um... I could definitely do that. Uh, bedtime story. Yes, we are here for bedtime story. Hello, Raiders. Hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. No, Otaku, is this what you wanted? I, I don't know if that will uh, translate without the visual of the fire itself. We could instead hang on, because I feel without the visual of the fire, that audio isn't really going to achieve much. At the visual top right, yeah, that's from. Do, do, 
You can go over chat. We don't need to see chat. Okay. So, hello Raiders, welcome in. Thanks for coming in for kin. My name is Blaze, more commonly known as Windfarer or Wind. How are we all today? I have been conned into reading you all a bedtime story. So here's what we're going to do. I have a bunch of fairy tale books from when I was a child. They are short stories, so it shouldn't take too long. We are going to just run through it. Wait, Blaze? Yeah, yeah, that that's my actual name there, Otaku. I am just going public with my actual name now. It is leaked, and I'm letting it out there. You're just telling people your name? Yep, I'm just telling people my, my name. The fact is, Elfin, I'm going to be doing a podcast with... Sir Heno soon, and it's going to be going public soon anyway. So, fuck it. I'm just going to do it now. Brave? Eh. It was something that was always going to happen eventually. Um, that suits you very well. Thank you. All right, so shall we begin? I'm not sure how this is going to work, where I should position myself. Should I go this side? Does this side work better for you guys seeing it? I think this side work, might work better for you guys seeing it. You guys can't really see what's up anyway. All right, so the first story is called, oh, that light is very reflective on it. And that's going to be a problem because I can't turn that light off. Actually, I might be able to get that light off. Just give me one second. Is that too dark? Um, no, nah, that should be fine. I think that should be fine. The first story is called Eskug Nedlog Et. Correct. Uh, Lava Lamp, where is Lava Lamp? Lava Lamp is over there at the moment. Uh, it would take too long to set it up, so... And by too long to set it up, I mean, if I were to turn it on, it wouldn't start doing lava lampy things for another hour, so... We're gonna skip that. Anyway. We shall begin. The Golden Goose. Once upon a time, there lived a woodcutter's son called Thaddeus. A dreamy, foolish-looking lad, but kind-hearted. One day, his father sent him to a distant wood to chop down trees. What hard work it was. Thaddeus couldn't re ever remember having so much trouble. At last, tired out, he sat down to eat. Suddenly, a little old man with a white beard popped out from behind the bush. Please, young sir, won't you give me a bite to eat? Asked the old man, hat in hand. Thaddeus invited him to share his bread and cheese. The old man ate his portion hungrily, saying that the young woodcutter was the first to show him kindness. As a reward, I'll tell you a secret. If you cut down that tree in the middle of the wood, all the others will fall. Be sure to look in its roots. And with that pop, the old man vanished. And there we go. Can you see that? We have Thaddeus here and the little old man.
Thaddeus was not one to bother his head with questions. He did as he was told, and in a twinkling his work was done. There among the roots sat a golden goose. My, my, exclaimed Thaddeus, surprised for once in his life. He tucked the golden goose under his arm and set off. He lost his way among the fallen trees. It was dark by the time he reached a village and found a tavern. The innkeeper's daughter brought him a bowl of soup. A sip for me and a sip for you, said Thaddeus, sharing his soup with the golden goose. The girl was amazed and asked why he was so kind to his goose. It's a magic goose, said Thaddeus proudly. Be sure to give me a room with a good lock, for I don't want to be robbed. The girl told her two sisters about the golden goose. Later, the three tiptoed to Thaddeus's door and opened it with the master key. The first sister tried to grab one of the golden goose's tail feathers, but her hand stuck fast. The others tried to pull her free and found themselves stuck too. Next morning, Thaddeus awoke to find the three sisters sitting on the table on the floor beside the goose, looking very uncomfortable. And so here we have Thaddeus and the goose eating. And here we have the sister, well, a sister, sneaking in to try and steal the goose. Help us, we're stuck to your goose, wailed the sisters. I can't help that. My goose and I are leaving. We just have to come along, said Thaddeus. The innkeeper saw Thaddeus going out the door with his three daughters. Angrily, he grabbed the last one and became stuck. His wife ran after them, only to find herself stuck too. Before long, the village pastor, the baker, and a passing soldier had joined the parade. Thaddeus walked along, paying no attention to their shouting. The village people came to their doors and windows. Soon, a laughing crowd had gathered. Near the vill village stood a king's castle. His only daughter was pining away, and no doctor could cure her sadness. The king had sworn that any man who made the princess laugh would have her hand in marriage. The princess had chosen that morning to drive through the village, I swear. Hearing the laughter, she looked out the carriage window. There was Thaddeus, solemnly marching along with his goose and his strange parade. The princess burst into peals of laughter. She stepped down from the carriage for a closer look. The next instant, she had joined the parade herself, still laughing. Alarmed, her coachman set off for the castle, and Thaddeus followed along dreamily. The king was overjoyed. He told the woodcutter of his promise. Kind-hearted Thaddeus let go of the goose and took the princess's hand. The golden goose disappeared with a squawk and a flapping of wings, and at last everyone came unstuck. Thaddeus and the princess were married the next day. The golden goose had worked its magic, bringing fortune and happiness to the woodcutter and his bride. And then we get a nice little picture of the procession with everyone stuck. The end of the first story. Did we all like that? Are we all feeling good? Are we enjoying that? see what we have having in chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Lots of laughing at Thaddeus. Okay. Make fuck I'm not the only one laughing at losing it at Thaddeus. Alright, so everyone seems to find the name Thaddeus entertaining. Good to know. Good to know. What's the moral of the story? That's a good question. Um, what do you think the moral of the story is? Again, so we want another one? He's asking us because he doesn't know. Well, I am indecisive as to what the moral of that particular story would be. Deforestation leads to wealth and success? I mean, that definitely could be one interpretation. Another give old men your food and you'll become the future king? Ads! Ads! 
There shouldn't be ads. I ran ads at the start, so there wouldn't be ads. Why are you doing this to me, Twitch? Really hate. I don't know what you guys are on about. I don't see any ads. No, but I can see there is a marker there to say that ads are currently on. They shouldn't be. I should have another 40 minutes of... Ad free viewing, but apparently not. Apparently Twitch is just being shit. So I'll just use all my snoozers and hopefully that buys some time. Because I'm not really planning on doing much there. Uh, t -t 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 rip yes campaign, so I'm guessing we got the results in. Um, Ken, thank you for gifting Mick the gift the sub there. You, you just got scammed, apparently. Mick bamboozled you. Anyway, shall we move on to the next one? Speaking of scamming, I, I think this one is topical from memory. The Pied Piper of Hamlin. On the banks of a great river in the north of Germany, lay a town called Hamlin. The citizens were honest folk who lived contentedly at first. The years went by and the town grew very rich. Then one day, an extraordinary thing happened. Rats had never been a danger in Hamlin, because the cats had always managed to catch most of them. Now, all at once, the rats began to multiply. Soon, a black sea of rats swarmed over the town. They attacked the barns and the storehouses, and then they ran into the houses and chewed on anything they could find. The terrified citizens flocked to the town hall and demanded that the mayor and councillors do something. More cats, someone shouted, but all the cats had fled. We must get help, said the mayor solemnly, but he had no idea where to find it. Just then there came a loud knock at the door. The councillors opened it, and to their surprise, a tall thin man dressed in brightly coloured clothes walked in, carrying a long golden pipe. I am the Pied Piper, announced the stranger. I freed other towns of beetles and bats, and for a thousand florins, I'll rid you of your rats. I did say mayor. I did indeed. A thousand florins, cried the mayor. We'll give you fifty thousand if you succeed. A thousand will do, said the stranger quietly. By sunrise tomorrow, there won't be a rat left in Hamlin. In the grey light before the dawn, the sweet sound of the Pied Piper echoed through the town. The Pied Piper walked slowly among the, along the streets. Out from the doors and windows came the rats, scrambling and squeaking in their hurry to follow the music. The piper walked through every street in town. Then, with an army of rats scampering behind him, he turned and walked towards the river. Right into the river he walked, and stood knee-deep in the fast-flowing water. The rats swarmed after him, only to be swept away and drowned. By the time the sun rose, there wasn't a rat left. The people cheered, and the town councillors rubbed their hands in glee at finding such an easy way out of their trouble. Soon, however, there came a knock on the council door. My thousand florins! said the Pied Piper. Oh, yes, replied the mayor. Well, my good man, the rats are all dead now. It really wasn't much work, and I think you should be satisfied with 50 florins. A thousand florins, or you'll be sorry, said the Piper angrily. So, and I, I didn't do this on the last page. I forgot to do it, but we have some more artwork. We have the Piper here and him leading the rats through the town. And then over here we've got him drowning them in the river. How nice. Bit of mass slaughter of the rats. rats. And then the his discussion with the councillors. We stop at night. We're the rats. Looking all angry when they're trying to jip him. Justifiably. 
And thank you for the blurb there, Juju. The mayor shook his head. 50 or nothing. Broken promises lead to broken hearts, warned the Pied Piper. And he vanished. That night, the citizens of Hamlin slept soundly for the first time in weeks. The strange sound of piping wafted through the streets at dawn. Only the children heard it. Drawn by the sweet music, they scampered out of their houses. Soon a long procession of children was following the piper. Last in line was a lame boy, hobbling along with a crutch. The piper left the town and walked towards the foot of a big rocky mountain. When he came close, he played his pipe more sweetly than ever. And a huge rock rolled away, revealing a door. What wonderful things the children saw inside the mountain. They hurried past the rock and after the piper... The lame boy, far behind, could see a marvellous cave and shimmering lights. Wait for me, he called, but he was too slow and the great rock rolled back in place. When the townspeople awoke to find all the children gone, they searched everywhere. At last they came upon the lame boy, who told them all what happened. We were too greedy, said the town councillors sadly, mindful of the Pied Piper's warning. The children were never heard from again. But it said, but it said that far away in a land beyond the great mountains lives a tribe of happy people whose legends say they are descended from the lost children of Hamlin. The end. And we get some pictures of the creepy man who's kidnapping a bunch of children and leading them into the woods. That that's kosher. And going into the cave. All the children with the creepy man. The rats make me crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They locked me in a room. A rubber room. A rubber room filled with rats. And the rats made me crazy. So how do we feel about that one? Did we enjoy that one? Are we all happy with that one? Thank you for the sub there, Azzy. <laughs> oh, fuck you three. I mean, I, I have to acknowledge what they're saying, Itako. I can't just ignore what they're saying. Okay, now I'm losing, losing it over. That's kosher. I mean... Pretty messed up. She started at Oki when you're really into nature today and oak trees. Ah, right. She spelled OK wrong. How do you spell OK wrong? It, it's a four letter word. In fact, it, it's a two letter word. You have all the power, it's your mind, you can evict the bad energies. The bad energies rule. Uh, friend has an emergency, having to leave, having up, le leave the con. So no worries, Azzy, you deal with that. Friends are important. Uh, so basically, pay your staff their fair wages or lose your kids. Yeah, yep. Don't screw over contractors or they're going to come and steal your kids in the night. Did Azir take his prescribed meds today? Probably not. There we go. He's taken one third of what he was supposed to. Good, good. She started, you engaged it. Now, Kitten. If Azure was to jump off a cliff... Actually, that should be the other way around, wouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Azure, if Kitten was to jump off a cliff, would you follow her? Probably, right? Alright. <laughs> he so would. He absolutely would. I would I I would be off the cliff before you, let's face it. Jumping off a cliff, that sounds like a blast. Alright, final story for the night. The Snow Queen. 
Also known as Frozen. Once upon a time, an evil sorcerer made a magic mirror in which love was reflected as hate. One day, the mirror broke, and tiny pieces flew all over the world. If a sliver entered someone's eye or heart, that person became cold and hateful. Carl... G Sorry. Just choking on air a bit there. It's always a good time. Carl and Gerda were two young children who loved each other dearly. Even the sweet pea that grew on Carl's windowsill spread across the street to entwine itself with Ger Gerda's little rose bush. One winter day, as Carl sat on a window seat watching the snow drift down, he saw a large white flake land in the garden. Its lacy, lacy crystals grew and grew until a beautiful ice maiden stood where the flake had fallen. Carl opened the window. As the cold air rushed in, he was startled to hear the maiden speak his name. He closed the window and sat down beside Gerda, who was reading a book. Something's prickling my eye, he said. Gerda looked, but saw nothing, for the splinter from the magic mirror had gone deep. From that day on, Carl became a hateful boy. Only Gerda still loved him, although he was rude and unkind in return. And here we have a picture of the sweet pea bush intertwined with the roses. And of the maiden that just appears out of little boy's windows. Nothing sus. One day, when Carl was playing in the snow, he heard bells jingling. He looked up and saw the beautiful maiden again, but this time she wore a coat with a large fur collar and sat in a great horse-drawn sleigh. Little did he know that this was the dreaded Snow Queen. Hitch your sled behind my sleigh and I'll give you a wonderful ride, said the Snow Queen. In trance, the little boy tied his sled to, her, to the sleigh. They sped away, and before long the great sleigh soared into the air. Frightened, Carl clung to his sled until they landed on an immense white plain. Come and keep warm, said the queen invitingly. Carl climbed into the sleigh. The snow queen kissed him, and as her icy lips touched his forehead, the little boy's heart froze, and he forgot all about Gerda and his past life. All winter, Gerda looked for Carl but he was nowhere to be found. When spring came, the rose and sweet pea trail sadly refusing to bloom or twine at last. Gerda went down to the river. I will give you my red shoes if you tell me what happened to Carl, Gerda told the river. She threw her shoes into the water, but they just floated back to the shore. Then Gerda climbed into a little boat and drifted away, hoping the river would take her to Carl. At dusk, the boat came ashore in the midst of a wood. Gerda climbed out and wandered away. All at once, a reindeer came through the trees and a crow flapped down onto a branch. If you're looking for Carl, I saw him fly by on the Snow Queen's sleigh, said the crow. Where is he now? cried Gerda. The reindeer replied, In Lapland, I will take you there. Gerda climbed onto the rain. Oh, wait, pictures. Pictures. I am bad at this. Alright. We have Carl hitching his sled to the Snow Queen's sleigh as it takes off into the sky. Gerda on the boat, just hoping that the random river cover currents will take her where she needs to be. Good plan. Good plan. And Gerda talking to the ra uh, the crow and the reindeer. Gerda climbed onto the reindeer's back and it galloped northward until they came to the frozen tundra. Lit by the fiery glow of the northern lights, 
As they neared the Snow Queen's castle, Greta caught a glimpse of Carl. He was sitting on a rock, staring coldly into space. Carl! Greta cried, but Carl kept staring straight ahead. Greta threw her arms around him and burst into tears. The teardrops fell on his eyes and ran down to his chest. The warm tears slowly melted Carl's heart, and he remembered all about Gerda and his past life. Then he too began to cry, and the hateful sliver of the mirror floated out of his eye. Come, cried Gerda. The reindeer carried the children home. As they jumped down from his back, they saw the rose and the sweet pea beginning to twine and blossom again. A sign of their everlasting friendship. The end. And we have some pictures of Gerda riding on the reindeer to Lapland. And Gerda hugging Carl. Ah. There we go. Three stories for the chat. Now let's go back. Uh, wait, why blurps 50 bits? They shouldn't be 50 bits. I thought they were Fuck that got me. Um, and let's go back to this one. Alright. Snow Queen, smash or pass? Oh, always smash. Uh, Twitch stream would show up. This Twitch stream would show up in the local police evidence locker. Very possibly. Wait, where is Olaf and Sven? Fun fact, not from the original story at all. Um, yoo -hoo, big summer blowout. Premium blurps are 50 bits or summer 50 for summer 15. I think it should be 30 and 15 if you're a sub. I think. Wait, is Snow Queen Jadis from Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe? Basically. <clears throat> uh, both of you to assume it is. Yeah. It, it is already in the police register. That is absolutely correct. Puppy wind, I'm thirsty. Can I have some water? You're big enough and ugly enough to get it yourself. Go on, Azzy. Go get your water. Wait, there's a woman in the story called Gerda. I mean, I am probably butchering the way to pronounce that. It, it's a German name, so you probably need to tap that R and... You know... Germanify that a whole lot, but... Yoda, I barely know her. Same, same. Thank you, that was fantastic. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Itaku. Uh, as I hate you. That, that, that's fair. Thank you for the blurb, as while well, the echo wasn't supposed to echo. I uh, probably got like two blurb audio files, I guess. 25 and 8 for me. Yeah, that sounds a bit more right. Sure, it wasn't Greta. It is. I'm quite sure it's not Greta. Let's see if I can get it close enough that it's readable on camera. G E R D A. Oh, my fingers on it. I mean, it's a reverse camera anyway, so. But you you can figure it out by looking in reverse. G E R D A. Someone saw the P from Pirate, they better watch out because he's irate. Justifiably, how dare you steal the P from Pirates? Generally, use the stream to sleep. Oh, it's a bit late for that now. You haven't fallen asleep yet, and that that's it. That, that's the three stories in that book. We're going to save one of the other books for if we ever do this again. That's not That's not saying we're doing this again. That is, if we do this again. You know what? Vods are right. Okay, yeah, you can you can do that. You have a parting question? Go for it, Elfin. You have until I decide who we're going to raid for through to. 
Does anyone have any suggestions or requests for a raid target? Why do you have this book in your home, 30-something single man? Because this is a book from my childhood, and I am a hoarder and have not thrown out anything. I have a lot of books from when I was a child. Guy Media, he's rambling. Yeah, that works for me. Right. Thank you for everyone who joined us here tonight. Thank you for those who came in in Kittens Raid. I hope you enjoyed the experience of me reading stories too. Any last comments you want to make, get them out quickly. Because once this raid starts, I am shutting off this stream. You're welcome, Azure. Make this a regular thing, please. 80,000 channel points and... It will become a re regular thing. The challenge is right there. 20% done. Speaking of, I do need to sort out the Sir Winnington stuff sooner rather than later. But there are four more books in that series, and then I have a bunch of other books to work through as well. So... I have the content ready for that one. Either way, thank you all for watching. Have a good one. Enjoy Guy Media. Spam a bunch of emotes. This is the first time of doing a raid with enough people for actual like emote spam. So do an emote spam. I demand it. <laughs>